Well, I got this guy outside yesterday and got it blasted. So now that that's done, the boys will be in here about any second. We're gonna go ahead and uh, get started taking down all my tarps and taking all the hardware off and getting this guy masked up. This one's gonna be done in just a few days, so we're gonna get right on it. And I'm gonna start stripping some of this garbage clear coat off. That's a typical trick by auto body shops. They put one coat of clear on and sell it to you that way. And you don't know that in a few years, the sun is gonna come through that clear, cook the paint below, powderize it, ruin the adhesion, and the clear starts coming off. And that's why on the roofs and tops of paint jobs, the clear starts coming off. It wasn't that it wasn't prepped, it's that this is what always sees the sun. And that's why it looks the way it does. Well, we got most of the basic masking done. We still have a few wheels to mask and stuff like that, but I sent the boys home and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get to work getting rid of some of this clear coat. It's gotta come off here before we do anything else. What I'm using is a tool called a rotary sander. <laughs> And it just spins like a grinder. It doesn't have the dual action like a DA sander, which is what dual action stands for. So what I'm using that for is I'm just getting rid of some of this clear coat. You see all that clear coat's gotta come off. And this is what it looks like once it starts to come off. And that means this needs to be primed and wet sanded. It's quite a process. So gotta get going on it. I don't know how well this is gonna translate onto the film, but that exhaust cover that was on here was maladjusted for years and years and just just beat the side of this cab all the heck. There's a big dent right here. You can see this crease right here. Little dings all the way up the side. And then up here, it ate into the sleeper cap, ate all the way through the sleeper cap, and ate almost all the way through the metal. I mean, that is, I don't know how that's knocked all the way through. It's so deep. So pretty good reason to not let that exhaust get too out of hand and if it is touching your truck you should probably get it moved all right the uh, corners are both all done and glazed now we're just going to get some wet sanding primer on them so that can sit all night all right well we got it all uh, wet sanded primed in the spots that need it both the uh, corners are badly beat up a few other little dents and dings here and there it's all scratched, all sanded, all ready to go. We're ready to put some white primer on. All right, let's get some paint on it. So we got this guy shot yesterday. Hopefully the camera got it this time. And uh, if you saw that, then you saw this. Now today I'm going to run some vinyl tape down the corner of this fender on both sides, segregate the fender off from the rest of the hood. And then I'm going to mask off everything else, all of this white and all of that white. So I can work on getting the fenders blue, chassis blue, roof cap blue, and the entire bed blue today. And today I'm gonna to be performing all this work by myself. The uh, crew had some obligations down south that we knew about for weeks, but uh, the project itself just was more time consuming to get it right, and that's always what's important to us. Uh, and so it took a little more time than we thought it was going to, and we ran on into the, the their schedule, which never bothers me. I went ahead and uh, sent them out, and uh, now I'm gonna finish this up by myself. Well, now it's been, uh, well, about three hours, and I've got the entire thing masked up. Got the back all covered in paper. Again, the roof cap is not. We've got the uh, hood all covered in paper. Again, the fenders are not. And the other side is much the same. Now I'm gonna begin prepping. I've still got some of that uh, clear coat I gotta get off of the roof, a bunch of it in fact. I have to finish prepping both of the lower fenders, which I've removed, 
and one of them's on the back of the truck and the other one's at the back of the shop. I'm gonna go ahead and get them prepped, um, get all my prep done, get this thing blown off so I can get it shot. At this point, I've got everything sanded, got everything prepped, got everything ready to go. Now I'm ready to go ahead and prime and then get some paint on this guy. Well, you guys about ready to get some paint on this guy? So here it's the next morning. This uh, the shoot went well. I'm gonna go ahead and begin unmasking. Now again, I'm gonna be doing this by myself. Uh, the crew went south. They had uh, other obligations, and this job was supposed to be done before that. But the details of the job ran it long enough that uh, you know we just weren't able to finish it in time, and we want to make sure we do it right. So today I'll be unmasking it and putting it together myself. And as you can see, I've already begun unmasking. And the way that I do that, and I've explained this before, but if you've never heard me explain it. The reason I do this first and I only rip out this little section and I do the uh, fenders or the stripes or whenever I, you're segregating one color from another with one single line, you want to unmask that first because 
if something goes wrong and the previous painter's paint job doesn't hold up and the stickiness, the adhesion of your tape pulls their paint up, which can happen and does, uh, you need to be able to just shift gears, figure out what you gotta do. And hopefully what you gotta do doesn't involve remasking the entire truck. The first thing you do every time is unmask stripes and fenders. We got it all unmasked and <clears throat> now I'm gonna start on uh, putting some of this stuff back on. Got the exhaust here, got the air cleaner, got these uh, fender flares headlight bezels and some brackets and you know the visor we got all this stuff to put on and then there's still a bunch of stuff in the cab too so we're gonna go ahead and get with it and get this stuff put on well got her all put together let's uh walk around it and have a look okay so this is a 2012 uh, kenworth 900 model it's an oil field truck bought recently at an auction by a company i do a lot of business for we went ahead and sandblasted the chassis and the bed everything back here removed a lot of things, you know, like the exhaust and the uh, air cleaners and even the uh, lower fenders and stuff like that. We left the mirrors on. Um, went ahead and uh, took the uh, oversized load sign off and all the lights out and that sort of thing. Turned out pretty good. Got some good shine on it. They'll be here first thing in the morning to swap it out with one that looks exactly like it. Exactly like it red and everything they bought two identical trucks from an auction and we're going to do them both one right after another as you can see the winch is blue and with the cab white it made it a little bit tricky it's not very much space to deal with but we got it done details are done you can see the airbags are still black even though the chassis is blue went ahead and did those those sorts of details like we always do. Down inside of everything, like we always do. Got some nice shine on it, looks brand new. And tomorrow it'll look like we never did anything at all because there'll be another one exactly like this one used to look sitting right here. All right, well, that's another big oil field truck in the books. If you like what you see here, go ahead and hit the like button and you might as well subscribe while you're there because you know, we always got something going on. We'll see you guys around.